Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. There are some interesting stories today, and I say that because I'm going to come out on the side of some things that you wouldn't think that I'd be in favor of. First of all, I am Mr. Sam I.B., and I hate all authorities. I think that all cops are pieces of garbage, don't I? No. Those of you that have watched the show know that there have been other occasions, especially in some of the videos, that YouTube is, because they have a suck-ass tech department not fixing, I'm missing like 150 videos on here. If you follow me, you know that I stick up for police officers when they are right, and I slam them and just about anyone else when I think they're not right well. I'm going to side with a police officer who I think has to be one of the nicest human beings I've heard about all year. And I'm delighted to report this. Plano police officer wraps a $100 bill in a traffic ticket. This is from CBS. I've been at work all night. My voice is fading away here quickly, so please bear with me. <clears throat> A traffic stop in Plano ended unlike any you've ever heard before. It started when Hayden Carlo was pulled over for an expired registration sticker. Carlo said he's been struggling to support his wife and two small children. You get paid, you pay your bills, and that's your money. It's gone. He told the officer he had no excuse for the expired sticker. It goes on. I said, there's no explanation why I haven't done it, except I don't have the money. I said it was either feed my kids or get the registration done. The officer wrote a citation and handed it to the 25-year-old. Carl says when he took it, he could not believe what he saw. I opened it up and there's a $100 bill. I broke down in my car what else I could do. Uh, I'm not going to keep reading it, but friends that listen to this. We have some cops that will taser a man having a seizure and give him a heart attack because they're freaks on control, uh, like, I've got control, uh, and the whole absolute power thing. And then there are people like this guy, and then I mean, even people like me that tend to think that our police system oversteps its bounds on a regular, daily, frequent basis. I don't think that most cops are rotten people. And I also don't think that most cops, or most people, including myself, is this good of a person. And uh, he wants to remain anonymous, but they're throwing a party or an appreciation thing for him at work. Mr. Plano Police Officer, whoever you are, you are a wonderful human being. Um, speaking of sticking up for people that I wouldn't normally stick up for, former U.S. president slams drone attacks. Uh, international the news, the news .com .pk. All right, uh, Giselle's gonna love this. Um, I've said for a long time that I think perhaps the worst president of my lifetime is President Obama. But prior to that, the worst president of my lifetime was probably Jimmy Carter. But I've also always said that I felt that Jimmy Carter genuinely is a pretty decent person. Now, I've heard about ties to the Illuminati. I've heard about other things. I don't know. But I do think that... Unless he's one hell of an actor, Jimmy Carter is probably a pretty decent human being. Uh, he'd have made a much better, um, perhaps religious leader or something to that effect than a president. Because economically, ooh, terrible. But the man was a decent man. And I say that because of this article, among other things. I mean, Habitat for Humanity... I mean, the man cared about his fellow people. That can't be argued. Washington, former U.S. President Jimmy Carter has slammed American assassination drone strikes in other countries, saying that killing civilians in such attacks would, in fact, nurture terrorism. 
I personally think that we do more harm than good by having our drones attack some potential terrorists who have not been tied or proven, uh, tried or proven that they are guilty, Carter said in an interview with Russia Today. This RT article has a point here. For those of you that don't know, and I've made it a point to make sure that I explain these things, because sometimes I worry that some of uh, you watching may not know what my point of reference is. It's, there's a burglar in your town, and the police shoot your house through your windows, maybe take out a relative. Shoot the house next door to you. Don't take out a relative, but, you know, injure someone. And in the third house, they kill the burglar. Is that a success story? Because that's what these drones attacks do. They know that a, a person of interest, and perhaps uh, someone who deserves it, maybe they do. Uh, in some instances, I mean... I'm sick of these pieces of terroristic human filth that exist in our world, so I don't care if they get theirs. Um, again, I, I know the government manipulates this, but let's face it, there are at least some people that do these sorts of things. Okay, fine, we need to go after them. The problem is you don't send a drone over and blow out the entire block or half the block or the entire apartment complex to get this person. And that's what Jimmy Carter is talking about here. And I, for one, am very happy that he is talking about it because these things need to be mentioned. He concluded by saying that there are 30 paragraphs in the UDHR, that is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and at present time, my country, the U.S., is violating 10 out of those 30 paragraphs. Jimmy Carter, good job. All right, now for things that I do not stick up for, nor would you expect me to. Brought to you by the Arcadia Grill, located on Court Avenue in downtown Ken. Delicious food, wonderful price. Go there, get the spaghetti and meatballs. When you eat the best meatballs ever, soak it up with their Italian bread and tell them that the correct view sent you. USA Today, Cowboys Mold Device to Immobilize Players' Cars. At what point does the hand of safety quit grabbing you in the cojones and making you sing like King Diamond? Calvin Hill asks himself that question repeatedly. Uh, what more can they do? I worded it differently, didn't I? What more can they do? Calvin Hill asks himself that question repeatedly in his role as a consultant for the Dallas Cowboys with the responsibility of administering off-the-field support programs. He is searching for more answers in the wake of the single-car alcohol-related crash early Saturday that killed practice squad leader linebacker Jerry Brown and left defensive tackle Josh Brent facing intoxication manslaughters. Obviously, we do whatever we can do, Hill said somberly before Sunday's game at Paul Brown Stadium, alluding to the team's educational programs. I don't know what more we can do. We are always examining and going over things. Well, how about that we increase the police state? That would be good. Hey, let's infringe on some rights, shall we? That'll be great. Hill said that the team could mandate the Cowboys players have electronic devices designed to immobilize vehicles when the driver is impaired. The device, it goes on, safe key, includes a small fob that is attached to the key ring which sends electronic signals to the complementary device that can prevent a vehicle from starting if a driver doesn't pass a test based on color-coded light emissions. Let me tell you something. First of all, if you get one of these dumb things on your car where you're going to blow in, do me a favor, have your sober friend blow in it. Second of all, DUI laws in this country are a joke. And let me tell you why. First of all, here's what they do. They will take an accident. Maybe you've had a beer or two and you rear-end a car in front of you because they slammed on their brakes dodging a squirrel. 
let's say in the police come and they check for alcohol, you have alcohol in your system, timber, that is an alcohol related accident, is it? I argue this, I say that if the person hadn't had two drinks in them, and the person stepped on the brakes in the same exact way and that the person who didn't have those drinks would have hit them anyway. They manipulate these things. The DUI laws have absolutely nothing to do with keeping us safe and everything to do about bringing money into the system and finding new ways to control people. Getting you to, okay, you put a boot on the car. Why not? It keeps us safer. Anytime that anything wants to keep you safer, it is the hand of government overstretching where it has no right. And if you're one of these people that do think that DUI laws are good, then why don't you start a petition or a movement and make it illegal to drive a car with any alcohol in you whatsoever? Why? You're never going to get that passed because the state wants people on these ridiculous uh, levels to keep getting popped and keep paying money. Face the facts, people. Our DUI laws are sent as a system of revenue and have nothing to do with safety. Uh, ABC News, feds want to black boxes in new cars, but will they be tracking you? Oh, Sam, the last article you read, you're a net case. We need these draconian DUI laws to keep us safe, oh, safe. Okay, how about we black box your car? The National Highway Safety, Travel Safety Administration would like to make it mandatory for automakers to install so-called black box in all new cars and light trucks. The devices, also known as event data recorders, have long been used by investigators to discover the root cause of commercial airline crashes. Of course, not during 9-11. That is the only time that all black boxes have ever been lost. In recent years, however, automakers have quietly begun installing similar products in more and more cars. The trouble is, they're using them to know whether or not your seat belt was on. How often do you drive without your seat belt? We live in the age of technology. This article alludes to the fact that maybe, or I should say, the possibility that maybe these are going to be sent to your insurance company. These are going to be used to bust you and bring in more revenue for the state again. Let me tell you something. I was a cab driver. And on three different occasions, I have had somebody run into me. In every, and I wasn't sighted, go look it up. I was a speeder, not a crasher. Um... And I never hit anybody. I, I think I've been cited for one wreck in my whole life. And that had to do with uh, the lane I was changing. It's a long, boring story. Anyway, I'm, not a, I'm an excellent driver. Um, in every instance that anybody has ever run into me, I have always been okay because I was not wearing my seatbelt. I was hit from the side once and I jumped to the other seat and I was okay. If I'd have been seat belted in, I would probably be doing this from a wheelchair. In head-on collisions, maybe, maybe tomorrow. I'm not bragging. Maybe tomorrow I'll be smacked into. And I'll die because I don't have one on. That's my decision. It's not the government's decision. And it's not up to them to abuse black box technology in the name of safety, which is exactly what they're doing. Last thing I want to get to, anti-GMO comments food flood cherry, excuse me, anti-GMO comments flood Cheerios Facebook page, something I'm in favor of. 
Before I go into this, Cheerios, I'm sorry. Why are we choosing you when so many GMOs exist on our food? I didn't. But we need a target to start at. And it's you. And I'm afraid it's coming to you. And I'm in favor of it. When the GMO Inside group asked its Facebook followers to go to the Cheerios Facebook page and comment about the company's use of genetically modified ingredients in the kid-friendly cereal, the Cheerios Facebook page got flooded with negative results. And before I go on, I'm going to keep the promise that I made a couple days ago. And again, why are we against GMOs? For those of you that may not know, that is genetically modified food. That is changing the way God created wheat. Or if you're a Darwinist, dust created wheat. And making it something different. Putting poisons in it. Making it so that there is the equivalent to round up poison in our food. And then we are ingesting it. Look up GMO French rats. Look at the pictures and it'll all be clear. David Lake is so right about that. Media speaks. In fact, General Mills, the makers of Cheerios, it goes on, removed an app on the Facebook page that allowed users to create messages about what Cheerios meant to them because people were creating messages and saying things like poison and deception. That can't be what General Mills was hoping to find, you think? All of the comments made with the app have been removed from Facebook page, but regular comments like the one below are still there. Sorry, Cheerios. I'm going to read it. And I agree with it. I used to feed Cheerios to my first child all of the time. And now that I am better educated on genetically modified organisms in my food, I am disgusted at the fact that I was naive enough to believe that the, at the time that I was actually feeding her something healthy. I know much better now and will never again let another Cheerios pass my children's lips until they are GMO free. Please don't, people. I am a firm believer that genetically modified organisms and perhaps aspartame killed my father. Genetically modified organisms, French rats. Look it up and you'll know what I'm talking about and why it is the correct view. Which is what you're listening to. The correct group, the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Hey, if you can donate to the show, please do. Because while I do have another laptop here, um, it still isn't able to really do the graphics and all that, which is why you're not seeing them right now. In order to get those graphics up, I may actually have to lessen the video quality that you are now seeing. So, help. Any money you give me for the show goes to the show. Give me what you think the show's worth. Good night, friends. God bless. Do something awesome for someone today, and uh, thank you for listening.